I don't know why you want a flag. Maybe you're just feeling patriotic today and you just want to wave that thing around. And yes, that is a South African flag. And yes, I am South African. Maybe you just need a white flag because you've given up and you need to surrender. You're just tired of fighting. Maybe you need to see a few red flags so you can be reminded as to why you're not dating your ex anymore. Either way, I'm going to teach you the basics of cloth simulation inside of Blender by making a flag. So, as always, we're greeted with our default scene inside of Blender. We press A on our keyboard to select everything and then press Delete. We press Shift A to bring up our Add menu and under Mesh, we're going to select Cylinder. We then go to our dialog box in the corner here and we reduce the size. We'll then increase the depth to make it longer. This will serve as our flagpole. Our next step is to add the flag. Press Shift A, go under Mesh and select Plane. We'll then press R on our keyboard for Rotate, and then press X and type in 90 to rotate it 90 degrees. We'll then press G and then X to move it up in the X axis. Then we'll just click once we've got it to the height that we want it. We'll then press S to scale and press X on our keyboard and type in 1.5 and press enter. This makes it more of a flag shape and with that we'll press G and press X to drag it over so it's just, just before the pole. So now it's already starting to look more like a flag, but it's not made of cloth yet. So before we can make it into cloth, we need to subdivide it. So we'll just press tab to go into edit mode, press A to select everything, and then right click on it and click on subdivide. And in the dialog box in the corner here, we'll increase the subdivisions to let's say 12. We'll just type it in. Uh, maybe we'll go with 15. And then we'll press enter. And then we'll tab back out of edit mode. So now that we have everything subdivided and placed where we want it, we'll just go down to the physics tab over here and underneath the physics tab we'll just click on cloth. Now if we press play it will fall. Now in order to fix that with our cloth selected we'll press tab to enter edit mode. We'll select the one corner and then press shift and click on the other corner. With those two corners selected we'll go under the object data panel and over here underneath vertex groups we'll click on the plus sign and click Assign. We'll rename this to uh, pins and then we'll go back to our physics tab, tab out of edit mode. And if we scroll down underneath shape, here it says pin group and we're going to select pins. So now when we press play, it starts to look a little bit more like cloth. But we've got a few problems. The cloth intersects with itself as well as the flagpole. So what we can do is underneath collisions, we'll turn on self collision. Now this will slow down the simulation just a little bit, but it'll look a little bit more realistic. And the other thing we can do is select our pole and add a collision. And now the flag collides with the pole. Now we haven't saved for quite a while, so don't forget to save your file. I'm just gonna name this one test. Now you can see our flag looks very blocky. So the way that we can fix that is by clicking on object and clicking on shade smooth. And that already looks better. And another thing we can do is if we click over here on the little spanner, we've got our modifier panel. We then click add modifier and go down to subdivision surface. And we can increase these numbers and that already looks better. But as you can see, our corners are rounded by the subdivision surface modifier. And the way we can fix that is by tabbing into edit mode and holding down shift and control. We click each of the edges to select them. But underneath the item tab over here, we increase the mean crease amount and that will sharpen our edges. We press shift A, go down to force fields and add wind. The arrow will tell you which way the wind is blowing. We're just going to rotate it so it's facing the direction we want the wind to blow, and then press play. Now it doesn't seem to be doing too much. So what we've got to do is go to our physics tab and increase the strength. And as we increase the strength, 
you can see it's affecting the flag more and more. We can increase the noise amount to add a little bit more noise. There we go. Isn't that awesome? Now, say you want your animation to start with the flag just sort of draping and then the wind picks up slowly. The way we can do that is we'll just delete our force field quick, press play, let our flag drop. Oops. We'll then press play to let our flag just drop without any wind. Okay, so sometimes you might come across an issue like this where you've deleted your force fields, but the animation is still playing as though it's there. So what you got to do is just select your flag, change one of the settings, and then go back to the beginning of your timeline. And now that should be all updated without any problems. Now that it's draping and it's just sort of hanging, we'll get to a spot where it's pretty much still. So right at the end here, it's standing completely still or at least close enough. We'll go to our modifier panel over here and just click apply. We'll then go back to our physics tab, add cloth again, scroll down, turn on self collision like we did before, select our pin group. Uh, we can change the physics to, we'll press shift A to add our wind back in. As we did before, we're just gonna decide which direction we want the wind to blow. We'll increase the strength and then press play. You will notice that that slowed right down. Don't forget to go into our, don't forget to go into your modifier and click this little arrow to move it above the subdivision surface modifier because if it's below the subdivision surface modifier, it slows the simulation down a lot. So now when we press play, it'll start from dangling to being picked up by the wind and waving in the wind. Now this is fine for just a, a white flag, but maybe what you wanna do is add in your country's flag or some other flag for your, I don't know, online gaming thing, I don't know. So what we can do is just go over to shading, select our flag, make sure our flag is selected, click on new, and you can go here and change it to whatever color you want. You can also press shift A, go to texture, add in image texture, and just plug it into the color, and then click on open to add a texture to your image. And there we have it. I'm just gonna go back to layout over here, and I'm just gonna turn on our render view. It looks very dark, but that's because we've got no lights. So what we can do is add some lights by pressing Shift A, going to light and adding in a sunlight. We can then also add in a point light. So now we've got this beautiful animation of a South African flag. Now that's not enough wind, so I'm just gonna increase the wind by a lot more. So underneath the physics tab, let's increase that by quite a lot. And there we have it. So now we've got our beautiful South African flag just flapping in the wind. So we're able to play with the cloth just a little bit more. With your flag selected underneath your physics settings, you'll see these three dots and lines. Just click on it and you can pick one of the presets. Silk looks pretty great for a flag and you'll see how it affects the animation so each one of these will have a different look to them. Denim is a lot heavier, doesn't get as affected by the wind. Um, leather and rubber even more so, it's a lot heavier. But I say if you go with silk, you've got yourself a pretty great looking flag. You can also play around with other settings, see what they each do, have some fun. But once you've got the flag looking kind of the way that you want, in order to speed things up, underneath cache, just click on Bake. And there you have it. Now you can just scrub through it without having to simulate it. It's already cached and pre-simulated. It saves a lot of time. It speeds things up a hell of a lot when it comes to render time. So have some fun making flags and playing with cloth in general. I suggest you experiment as much as possible. And if you want to know more about cloth and you want to see more tutorials around cloth, let me know in the comment section below, and if you like this tutorial, consider donating to my Patreon and subscribing. By the way, if you become a patron, you'll be able to download the project files for this tutorial. And if you don't want to sign up to Patreon, 
consider sending me some cryptocurrencies or even donating through PayPal. Even just a like and a subscribe would be enough. Thank you, everyone. Remember to stay creative. From this distant vantage point, the Earth might not seem of any particular interest. But for us, it's different. Thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines. Every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization. Every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, every saint and sinner in the history of our species. 